Well, there's always room for uh, a higher degree of execution, right? Nobody played a perfect game. So we made X number of mistakes on defense and X number of mistakes on special teams and X number of mistakes on offense. So if we, if each guy can clean up a mistake, you know, then we're going to be a much better football team than we were the week before. So every guy's responsible for learning from the, from the last outing and learning from the last practice and the last meeting. And every guy's responsible for going home tonight and flipping through their pages and waking up in the morning and thinking some football and, and trying to be better than they were. So it's a constant process of, of improvement. And if we see improvement this week, then obviously it should reflect in, in what it looks like on the field. Convincing win for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers in week one in the Grey Cup rematch against the Ticats. Looking to move to 2-0 and tonight at IG Field. Welcome inside game day here on Bonfire Sports. Bombers and Argos tonight, Chris Walby. Let's start with the huge storyline going into this game. Willie Jefferson left practice on day one this week, did not practice the rest of the week. He's officially questionable tonight, but many people expect him to be ready to go. Whether he's in or out, 100%, 80%, whatever it might be as we speculate, what impact yeah. can Willie Jefferson make? He, he's a listen he is a key player he's one of those guys that actually makes everybody around him better this is a guy that's not and plus anybody knows willie jefferson knows one thing this guy just exudes confidence exudes charisma and he's loud and brash and confident and he wants to play you know what there's no way you're gonna unless he's in a wheelchair there's no way you're keeping him off the football field willie jefferson wants to play football he's an impact player he wants to make his presence felt he knows he's having a great start with that interception last week against hamilton He's, he's always in the backfield making plays. So, listen, there's no way that you're not going to see number five Willie Jefferson line up at that end spot. Argonauts quarterback McLeod Bethel-Thompson gets a start for a second consecutive week as Nick Arbuckle, their projected number one coming into this season, still battling through a bit of an injury. Uh, but in the end, Chris, this Blue Bombers defensive front, and we're going to talk about both lines of scrimmage for Winnipeg. People across the country right now are talking about these two lines of scrimmage, these offense and defensive lines here in Winnipeg, not just being the best in the CFL today, when it comes to the defensive line, maybe one of the best of all time. Of course, it's early, but that's high praise here in the early going. Yeah, but you know, the biggest thing too, and I know Casey Sales is in right now, and he's going to replace a, a real fire plug in Steven Richardson in that middle of the defensive tackle spot. But you know, when you talk to anybody around the league, especially the coaches who really break down the film before the players see it, uh, you know, they, uh, if you want, even if you want to talk about Ryan Dinwiddie, the head coach of Toronto Argonauts, the first-year coach, he said this defensive line, the bomber defensive line, might be, might be, and that's a key word, might be. Remember, coaches are always flattering to the opponents, right? They don't want to get them angry. You don't want to put, you know, locker room stuff up there. But he said this defensive line might be the best that he's seen since he's been in the CFL. I, I kind of agree right now. I don't I thought Hamilton had a good D-line when Jagarrett Davis and those guys. Uh, but obviously they missed Ted Laurent. Now I look at uh, you know, I look at the bombers and they just come in, they plug and play. I mean, Casey Seals had the one sack last week. He's a force in the middle. Here's a guy that, you know, played in a bunch of leagues, getting an opportunity to play here. And then you know what Jackson Jeff could, I think, is the most underrated player in the CFL. He doesn't get any of the credit because number five shines up, you know, all the time. The limelight's on number five. But I tell you what, number 94, Jeff Code, is just as good as and really a great impactful player on the run as well as the pass. And with uh, Stephen Richardson, the man they call Stove, number 98, out uh, yeah. with a foot injury, has not practiced all week. We also going to see Ricky Walker, another American rookie, step into defensive tackle alongside Casey Sales and Jake Thomas, of course. Whether it's Jonathan Kongbo, Theadric Hansen, uh, the the amount of talent on this defensive front, and then you have Adam Big Hill as well uh, in that front six, um, they can really rotate. And even this week, I found this really interesting, Chris, and I wanted to ask your opinion on it. The Blue Bombers, cool. yeah, the Blue Bombers mentioned Jonathan Kongbo, namely saying that when they step onto the field, whether it's a tackle or an end, a three-man front, a four-man front, they'll switch things up. Willie Jefferson will move to the inside. Uh, you know, Steven Richardson will move to the outside and, and line up at end. They don't even tell the coaches. They just go out there and do it. 
Have you ever seen that in your CFL career where the big guys are on the outside, the speed rushers are on the inside, just to throw you as an offensive lineman off your game? Well, I've seen it before, but not to this extent. I mean, I, I, I you know, understand it's only game one, but when you have, as you said, you know, the talent they have, and then you throw in Theodric Hansen, who can come in and make an impact as well. Uh, I, I just think that when you got this kind of talent, and they're all different kind of players, they can move, as they say. The fact is, as you mentioned, it's very strange because usually a D-line coach or the defensive coordinator is the guy who's going to say, hey, guys, switch it up. But, again, when you're on the football field, if you can find a weak point, a lot of times you try and put your best player on that weaker player and try to exploit them, especially when you're looking at a guy. If I'm a tackle and I got a guy coming in here and I know he's just a speed rusher, all of a sudden they bring another guy in, I got to figure him out. Is he a speed rusher or is he going to bull rush me? Is he a guy that likes coming inside on me? So I like that because it keeps that offense alignment guessing as to who's going to be there and what kind of moves they're going to use on him. So often this strategy is at the hands of the head coach and the coordinator but now we're starting to see it from the players. To me, Chris, that screams trust. That screams the Blue Bombers trust their players on the field. Whether they're a veteran or a young player, they have that leadership there. Whether it's Big Hill or Jefferson or Jeff Coat or Jake Thomas, the longest tenured Blue Bomber, of course. They let those guys go out there and play the game. That's That, that says a heck of a lot to me. Does it not to you? Yeah. Yeah, it does. Uh, but I, I think it's funny you mentioned Jake Thomas. Jake Thomas is probably one of those guys that's always going to stay on that tackle position. You know, I don't think you're going to see Jake Thomas jump out to the end. This is no knock on Jake Thomas. I think he does a great job. Again, another underrated guy in the middle of that bomber defense. But I don't think you're going to see him on the end. I think the fact that, you know, uh, Kongbo can play. He's an athlete. He's fast. He's quick. He's strong. They can switch. So you got him and you got Jefferson and you got Jeff Coat and even Casey Sales. I think they can jump these guys around. You don't usually see too much of uh, Steven Richardson uh, when he was there going to the end as well because he's a guy that's got incredible push. You need push in the middle to help your ends. If you don't get push up the middle, the quarterback just sits back there. You wash the ends to the outside, bam, you got all day to throw that football. So that's why they got to keep those guys in the middle. We have all that roster information you need here on game day on Bonfire Sports ahead of Bombers and Argos game two of week two in the CFL. So with Steven Richardson out with a foot injury, Chris, we mentioned Ricky Walker. We mentioned Casey Sales making his second uh, game, uh, second dress and first start in yeah. the Canadian Football League. Willie Jefferson, questionable, but expected to play. Um, it leaves Adam Big Hill at linebacker, but next to him, that weak side spot, Kyrie Wilson has not practiced in a few weeks now. It was listed as a thigh injury. It's now changed to a hip flexor injury officially on the injury report uh, put out by the yeah. Canadian Football League. And now the rookie that stepped in for him had an interception against the Ticats in week one. John Trell Rockamore, he didn't practice this week. He's out for week two. And, well, who steps in? Not another rookie, but a very trusted veteran in Canadian Jesse Briggs. Yeah, seven-year veteran. And, I mean... Michael Shea loves this guy because, as you say, he knows the defense. He knows what he has to do. Uh, they put these tests out all the time, and, you know, he scores 100% all the time. And that's the thing you got to understand. Not only what you're doing, but you got to know what the guy next to you is doing. And that relieves some of the pressure on Adam Big Hill because normally when Rockamore was in there, no offense, I thought the kid played a good game. Yep. But Adam Big Hill has to make sure this young guy knows where to go. Well, Jesse's been there for seven years. He understands that position so well. And, in fact, I think what's going to happen is, there's going to be more freedom for Adam to take chances because he knows he doesn't have to really worry about the guy to his right. Chris, we're going to hear from Adam Big Hill in just a minute, his thoughts on McLeod Bethel Thompson, who starts for the Argos tonight. But let's hear from head coach Mike O'Shea on a player that he and general manager Kyle Walters have been extremely high on since they traded up in the draft seven years ago to draft linebacker, linebacker Jesse Briggs, who will start against the Argos tonight, a student of the game. Yeah, Jesse Briggs from uh, his rookie season was a guy that um, when they would hand out defensive tests uh, would get 100% right on the test and he wouldn't uh, he wouldn't sit there in a group to make sure he got the answers right. He would just flip through the test, quickly do it, hand it in, it'd be all perfect, right? So he always knows what to do. He knows what the guys around him do. Uh, he rarely makes mistakes. Besides that, he's physically uh, gifted. Uh, he's fast and strong, um, which is why we picked him. Uh, and, you know, he's a he's a great teammate. So f full confidence in Jesse. 
always. Chris, there you have it. The head coach stated it as plainly as he could, always has had confidence in Jesse Briggs. An important position against a Toronto Argonauts team that we know is a passing team, but their head coach, their players mentioned this week, well, namely Ryan Dinwiddie, their head coach, he would like to be more balanced in the way he attacks. They got away from the run in the third quarter against the Calgary Stampeders in their win uh, at McMahon last week. Short week for them. Game planning is going to be important. Well, game planning, this is a huge thing. Anybody who's ever played a short week, you can't really do much. The players don't get a day off because you got to come back because you got three and you're right away back in the next game. So usually you try and go three practice, you know, uh, and the day before. Now they're going two practice day before. Uh, and then you got, like you said, they ran the ball. Toronto ran the ball 10 times. Actually, uh, they ran a lot of it in the fourth quarter. Matter of fact, Bethel or McLeod Bethel Thompson was the second leading rusher, which is not a great thing when your quarterback's the second leading rusher, but he rushed for 24 yards, a couple key runs in the fourth quarter that kept that 10 play drive alive that allowed them to come back and beat Calgary. So um, I do expect hundred percent that this Toronto uh, offense will definitely try to establish that run a lot more and a lot earlier than they did last week. Well, Chris, as you know, as an offensive lineman, how do you eliminate or limit pressure on your quarterback and on your offensive attack. You got to stay balanced. You got to run the football. McLeod Bethel Thompson, frankly, is as gunslinger as gl- gunslinger gets in the yeah. CFL. He loves to drop back, uh, you know, was amongst the league leaders in yards and touchdowns in 2019. And what happens? Week one goes into Calgary. Yeah, they're a younger defense that have kind of, uh, you know, retooled things, but he throws for 350 yards. And if it wasn't for his arm, and as you mentioned, they only ran the ball outside of You know, McLeod Bethel Thompson running four times for 24 yards. They only ran the ball 10 times. It was all off McLeod Bethel Thompson's arm. But of course, the man they call the law firm of McLeod Bethel and Thompson, MBT, uh, had a lot of compliments for the Blue Bombers defensive front and namely Willie Jefferson. You could see it versus Hamilton, right? Masoli was not comfortable back there. So um, we don't want to get in that situation where we're running around crazy and trying to make a whole bunch of miraculous plays. So we want to be able to control the front and uh, it's where their strength is, right? Their front six, um, those four up front. And then obviously two backers behind them, including Big Hill are really good football players. So um, that's going to be our focus. And, uh, and we just got to be able to eliminate the big plays, right? They, Willie Jefferson is a human highlight reel, you know, he's going to make plays all over the field. So uh, we got to find a way to, to eliminate those. Um, and the same with Jeff Cody, he's a good edge rusher and, and they got strong in, on the inside. So, you know, it's a complete front and we're going to have to play our best to, to beat them. The human highlight reel, Chris, that's the way McLeod Bethel Thompson describes Willie Jefferson. Hard to argue that whether he's healthy or not, uh, you know, Blue Bomber teammates are expecting Willie Jefferson to do big things. Jackson Jeffcoat, his bookend said on Thursday or yeah, said on Thursday that Willie Jefferson is a special player and that he's going to make an impact no matter what. Well, the thing about Willie is he does some things on his own that a lot of players can't do. And that is like one rush the quarterback and then still have that athletic ability to get back and try and defend the pass, which he saw last week when he interrupt, uh, intercepted Mazzoli's pass over the middle. And that's a great job because what the Mazzoli is trying to do, or the Hamilton quarterback is trying to do is try to hit that quick back across the middle where nobody, where the linebackers vacated, but they dropped a defensive end in that spot. He comes up with a key interception that ends that drive, which is a real pivotal part of that football game. Now, well, listen, Willie does a great job. Now, we're going against a different guy. This is a big quarterback in uh, McLeod Bethel Thompson. 26 touchdown passes last year, over 4,000 yards, only 13 picks. Uh, had I thought he had one of his best games. I watched the game film last week against Calgary, and I'm going to tell you what, this kid was on fire. Uh, McLeod Bethel Thompson threw the ball as well as I've ever seen a quarterback throw a ball. Pinpoint. He's got some great receivers in Daniels and Rodgers. We know what those guys can do. Uh, you know, Ricky Collins. And that, he would have had a big touchdown if it wasn't for the guy coming back, uh, Amos on Calgary, who knocked it out of his hands just as he's crossing. But listen, uh, I like this kid. I've always liked him. I think he's an underdog. I think he doesn't get the respect he deserves. And I don't think you can take him for granted. He's a very modest guy. He knows he's fighting for his job because, obviously, you got Nick Arbuckle behind him, who they paid a lot of money to start and he's nursing a, a soft uh, a flesh injury uh, hamstring, but he's dressing and according to Dinwiddie, can play if need be. 
Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that works. And, you know, my scouting report on McLeod Bethel Thompson, what I've seen from him, let's keep in mind, the context is important. He was with nearly a dozen NFL teams before he decided to come up to Canada. He's a big body, big arm, can sling it, no doubt. But it was the decision-making and the miscues that definitely cost him that continued stay in the NFL. It definitely cost him, uh, you know, more opportunities in the CFL. But that's the thing about quarterbacks with good skill sets, Chris, if they can figure out the mistakes and they can play a more sharp game mentally, he's only going to get better. I'm seeing him eliminate those mistakes. I'm seeing him throw less interceptions. This could be a big year for him. Uh, Three Down Nation has him atop their uh, most outstanding player rankings coming out of week one. Now he goes up against, I'll just say this, now he goes up against three rookie defensive backs in the Blue Bombers backfield. Josh Johnson is out with a head injury. I'm going to stick up for him a little bit. As, as I'm going to stick up for all quarterbacks in general. A lot of times you put an interception on a quarterback, you say it's the quarterback's fault. Remember, a sure. lot of this can do with pressure, trying to get rid of the ball. Secondly, a receiver and a quarterback not on the same page, running the wrong route. When you look at what they did, and I've told you this already, uh, the, well, I haven't even mentioned, but I'll tell you, um, they have 21 new players starting on this team out of the 24 from last year. They got veterans, DeVaris Daniels. You're talking about, you know, Eric Rogers. You're talking about Ricky Collins. You're talking about Jawan Brescheson. A lot of talent. These are, these are veterans. So when you have a quarterback, he's working with these guys who understand the game and they've all been in training camp. They've not, you know, they've all practiced. They're on the same page. That's what allowed them to be so successful last week. I think it was one of the first times they've won in Calgary in a long time. So for me, when I saw these guys and what I saw last year, it's totally different. So that's what I say. Sometimes you got to take the, you know, you just can't take the hammer to the head and play whack-a-mole with the quarterback all the time because I think sometimes it's not always the quarterback's fault. Chris Walby, you carved out nearly two decades in pro football protecting quarterbacks. That continues here, of course, on game day on Bonfire Sports. Those three rookie defensive backs that are starting for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, we saw DeAndre Alford, we saw Dietrich Nichols in week one. They played quite well, both graded out well um, uh, in addition to that. Uh, Josh Miller steps in at uh, field side corner next to Nick Taylor. That's where Mike Jones normally is. Josh Johnson took a real smack in the second quarter against the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Got up off the field, came off on his own power, and then I saw him on the Blue Bomber sidelines on a knee for a significant period of time. They gave him some water. They gave him some attention. Uh, He is officially listed as a head injury and on the six-game injured list. So we hope the best for Josh Johnson, uh, a player that Adam Big Hill has raved about being a great leader on this Blue Bombers team, but an opportunity now for a diminutive player in Mike Jones to step into a real physical spot at the dime, the strong side linebacker spot, some to refer to it as. It's essentially a DB that plays right in the box, right near the line of scrimmage. He's got to play tough. He's got to play big. This is a big change from playing outside corner in a cover man. Yeah, but the thing I like about Mike Jones is Mike Jones is a physical guy. We saw this in the playoffs last year on their run to the Grey Cup. I watched him last last week against Hamilton. He forced a fumble. He he tied for the team lead in defensive tackles with seven. He's there. He's got a nose for the football. That's why I think they're very comfortable in placing him where Josh Johnson was. Now it'll be interesting, as you say, Josh Miller is going to get a lot of action in that short side corner, and he's playing beside Nick Taylor. It's always tough. Because whenever you put a new guy in there, it's all about, as everybody knows, communication. Yeah. And you got to make sure you got the right thing going on. If we're switching players, are we, are we staying zone? Are we going deep? Are we staying man to man? You know, they just might lock him up on a guy and say, this is who you got. So to try and make it simple for the young man. But uh, they got three guys starting in that secondary now uh, in their first year with the Bombers. So, uh, you know what? I, I don't think that Toronto's licking their chops, but I think they're saying, you know what? We have opportunity. Absolutely. You know, John White running the football will probably be more of a factor tonight uh, as the Argos are at IG Field against the Blue Bombers, Chris. Um, And it helps a lot. I think it's a smart move, moving Mike Jones to the dime and keeping Brandon Alexander at safety. You're going to have three rookies uh, along with Nick Taylor at corner and at halfback. Uh, When you have that veteran leader and communicator, the traffic cop, almost in Brandon Alexander at safety. He's going to be able to direct uh, all of the things happening in the Blue Bombers defensive backfield. I think it's a smart move to keep him at safety. When it comes to head coach Ryan Dinwiddie of the Toronto Argonauts, well, he spoke on the caliber of this Blue Bombers defense and 
not just the defensive line, but those defensive backs as well. Yeah, they're pretty special. You know, you got Willie in the boundary, and then you got uh, Jeff Coat to the field, and, and they're, uh, Jeff Coat's really good against the run and pass. Willie's a really good pass rusher, and he can drop into coverage. You always got to know where he's at, right? Uh, especially when you throw balls over the middle. And then uh, 98 Richardson, I mean, that guy gets some push, man. He, he's a uh, bowling ball down in the middle. So one of the best uh, groups I've ever seen in my in my career, if, if not the best, uh, with Jeff Coe and Willie. And then uh, you got uh, 98 in there as well. So they're, they're a solid group. They can stop the run. You, you obviously seen that last year. Uh, and then the first week of the season, then they're going to put you in long yardage situations. And then that's when they're going to get after you rushing the passer. So we have our hands full. We obviously know that with the crowd noise, too. Uh, those guys can get a little jump on the snap count, which is going to be difficult for our tackles at our interior line with Richardson. And how much does that kind of push from a D-line tend to cover up new faces, issues, lack of experience in the secondary? Yeah, I think, you know, you look at a lot of the turnovers in, in previous years, the, the quarterbacks are throwing the ball right to the guys, right? Because they're, they're getting a push and they, the windows aren't quite there yet or they feel pressure and they, they rush their uh, decision-making and they just throw it in. Uh, we feel like the secondary, I, I, I think, just watching on film, I think they're every bit as good as they were the year uh, prior. So, uh, really good defense. They did a really good job against Hamilton. Uh, we got our hands full. Argos head coach Ryan Dinwiddie, of course, referring to 98 in the middle of the Blue Bombers defense. That's Steven Richardson, of course. He is out tonight with a foot injury, Chris. But you talk about a deep positional group. This Blue Bombers defensive front has it. They've got everything they need. I mean, this is the thing I talked about, plug and play. And that is a uh, reflection of the great scouting that Danny McManus and the scouting department have done. Kyle Walters getting these guys. And that, and then the Wade Miller and actually Coach O'Shea in creating a culture where players want to come to Winnipeg and play. And that's a big thing. So when guys come here, people talk in the offseason. The players get on the phone and go, hey, Johnny, how you doing, brother? Hey, you want to come down to Winnipeg? What's it like? It's great. Bam. That helps a lot to bring guys in. So they've got a, a plethora of, of talent on defensive line. And as I mentioned before, if one guy goes down, they get the next guy to plug and play and right. He steps right in. And this is Casey uh, sales time. We'll see what he does. And they got Ricky Walker behind him and you know, he's still got Congo so they can play anywhere. So, uh, and I love what they do and the fact that they can rotate. So, you know what, which the, the old philosophy used to be, uh, I remember teams that had five defensive linemen, and you know what? You get beat up, you got four. Now you're going to play the whole game. There's nobody can come in. Yeah. These guys can rotate, stay fresh at all time, so you're getting maximum efficiency as far as stopping the run or, or going after that quarterback. No question about that. Uh, Chris, last word on the Blue Bombers' defense. We'll give it to Adam Big Hill uh, and the film that he saw from McLeod Bethel Thompson uh, and the Toronto Argonauts in their Week 1 win in Calgary. I mean, there's always things to learn. Um, you know, you want to get a sense of who everybody is, um, what's what, what what's going to be their identity, um, what are the things that they're trying to do, you know, who are the guys they want to go to. Um, you know, so, you know, I, I, we know for a fact they have great pieces over there, and then, you know, they're trying to put them in great position and um, on both sides of the ball, offense and defense. Um, you know, so there's definitely things to take away and, you know, uh, Bethel Thompson was throwing the ball well and, and, and making good decisions. And um, they were doing a great job picking up pressure from Calgary. I mean, and they looked pretty solid week one. Yeah, I was going to ask you about Bethel Thompson. What does he do well and what makes him challenging to play against? Uh, you know, I, I'd say he's, he's, a, he's a gamer. I, I think he sees the, the field pretty well. I think he he reads pretty well. He he pulls it down and run, runs when he needs to. Um, you know, I think he does a good job getting the ball out quick when he needs to. So, you know, I think he's been growing in the CFL since his time here. And I think, um, you know, he's building off of some of the things he was doing last year. And I mean, I think he's a great football player. So that's the Blue Bombers middle linebacker, Chris Adam Big Hill, of course. How about the Toronto Argonauts middle linebacker? He'll be in the heart of their double blue defense at IG Field tonight. He's a good old friend of ours, too, here in Winnipeg, Enoch Mwamba. And he talked about Brady Oliveira, who was coming off a huge game, a CFL top performer uh, this past week, and the Blue Bombers run game systematically. Yeah, they do a really good job, you know, in the run game. Obviously, you know, they feature, um, you know, their feature back is, is Andrew Harris. But um, the reason why he's successful as well is, you know, obviously he has good experience and, and he's done a lot really well over the last few years. But... 
Um, you know, people always forget about how physical um, they are up front and um, how um, disciplined they are and, and they execute very well. You know, every play that they run, they, they give it, a, you know, everything they got. And, and, and really the best thing that they do, I think, is they're very, very physical. And if you watch the game from what last week and what we've been watching on film, you know, they, they, they completely took over the line of scrimmage and uh, they managed it. They handled it. And um, that's how they were able to do what they wanted to do, uh, whatever they wanted to do up front. So really, it starts them up front. Um, once you can manage that, match their intensity, match their physicality, um, then you give yourself a chance. Okay, I tell you what. One thing about Enoch Mwamba, this guy's a player. He's a hitter. He's smart. He's been. He's been a. This is his ninth year, and I, I kind of shake my head. I don't believe he's been around that long. But he, remember, yeah. he went to the NFL. Had a stint down there. He was in Montreal. Now he's in Toronto. He was in Winnipeg to start his career. Uh, this, I, I actually did a speaking engagement with him, with him and Moose Jaw Saskatchewan of all places. And I uh, got to meet him on a personal level, just a great individual, very family oriented guy, yeah. a guy that just comes in. He's a lunch pail kind of guy, but very smart, very physical, very much like an Adam Big Hill. Wants that contact, likes to make a difference, want to make an impact, maybe turn the ball over. Uh, I look for big things for a knock and, uh, listen, uh, you, you also got to remember another guy that they, they picked up and Cameron judge out of Saskatchewan. Yeah. Nice who was their there. rookie of the year nominee? Uh, that kid's a is a, is a ratio breaker at that uh, uh, wide side field. So uh, this Argo defense, like uh, you know, when you talk about eleven of the twelve starters, all new. Uh, they've you know, and this is, goes back to Pinball Michael Pinball Clemens, the general manager. And I know when he was a coach, uh, he did a great job of bringing players. He's a very gregarious. He's outgoing. They love him. As that a smile, GM, right? Say, oh yeah, and he's <laughs> he's got more uh, quips and quotes. Like I, I I mean I used to listen to him and I'd be in awe of what he did, but he's another guy that's creating that culture, that's creating that uh, that that change in Toronto where before they would say ah Toronto no fans they're going to change that dynamic of that team early and often. I think this is no longer uh, you know one of those what do you call a bingo stamp where you get the free win. This yeah. is going to be a tough game. Yeah, I, my my memory of Pinball Clemens is after the 2017 Grey Cup when the Argonauts captured the win in the snow and interviewing Pinball in the locker room. He evokes so much emotion. He nearly had me in tears. He's just that captivating of an individual. Uh, interesting that, you know, they've given him that official GM position in Toronto. Meanwhile, John Murphy is kind of their VP and head of player personnel. He's the one that's brought in this glut of talent and so many new players since he kind of took things over um, over this extended uh, 2020 and 2021 uh, off season. Uh, but for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers in, in facing Enoch Mwamba and a very talented defensive front, Shane Ray is out with an injury, a former NFL first round draft pick, their defensive end. Uh, so they'll have, uh, you know, some new players stepping up, of course. Player you love to watch, Chris, and that's the old Wiley veteran in Charleston Hughes. He could still be giving Stanley Bryant and Jamarcus Hardrick fits Friday night. 13 years in the league. Saskatchewan didn't, you know, the fans loved him. He's a fan favorite when he was in Calgary. He's a fan favorite when he was in Saskatchewan. It became a dollar's amount. I mean, he felt that he was going to get offered a contract. And I know a lot of the players took cuts this year because the shortened season and because of the pandemic. But he decided at a time that, you know, who's, who wants me the most? And unfortunately, sometimes it comes down to the Greenbacks. And Toronto offered him it. And, they were, and he's having a good time. And last week, again, forced a fumble and recovered it. And made an impact on a play. Uh, this is a guy that it, it, you almost think he reminds me like of an Alfred Payton, who I had a chance to play with one of the greatest defensive ends that ever played in the CFL, yeah. Hall of Famer, who looked like he was taking plays off all the time. And all of a sudden, whoosh, he's by you and the quarterback's on his back. So he's one of those guys, he's sneaky. He's sneaky good. You got to watch him all the time. And you can't just take a play off against this guy because he'll, he'll talk to you and say, hey, how you doing? How's the family? Next thing he's, you're picking your quarterback up. So. I'm a big fan of Charleston Hughes. I think he's still got a lot of gas in the tank. Yeah, and there's a lot of talent behind that Argos talented defensive front. And, you know, you look at, at Peters and Richardson and uh, uh, Butler at safety for the Toronto Argonauts. It's going to be interesting to see how the Blue Bombers offense game plans against uh, this Argos defense. It's going to come down to Zach Kolaris. And, of course, here's the thing, Chris. This offense is still relatively new like it's easy to forget because of so many of the same names 
are there. Kenny Lawler, Darvin Adams, Andrew Harris, all the guys on the offensive line. Of course, Harris and Adams uh, still on the one game injured list and will not play uh, tonight. But it's a new offensive coordinator in Buck Pierce. It's a new starting quarterback in Zach Kolaris. He's still working to gel and build that rapport with the receivers around him. Listen, anybody had any questions about Zach Kolaris, put him to sleep right now because I'll tell you right now, that guy was amazing last week. I mean, there's two things that happen when a quarterback and he uses his feet so well and he's healthy. This is he's had time off in the game. And we watched him escape pressure where he looked like he was going down. He runs around, but one thing about him, Zach Kolaris is always looking downfield. Eyes are always downfield. Yeah. Two of the biggest plays in the game, one with the touchdown, another one I think he hit Dembski down the sideline, was because he broke the play, got to the outside. Now, on the conversely, on the other side of it, as an offensive lineman, it drives you crazy because you're as you're blocking, you don't know where he's going to be. So when he starts to scrabble, you know, a lot of times a quarterback will get hit or he'll get sacked, and he had three sacks last time, but a lot of them was not because of the initial protection, but because Zach runs around and trying to make something happen when there's nothing open. A lot of the times the coverage is good. He's got to extend the play, takes off and runs around, uh, and, and he makes things happen. And that's what I like about it. I think Zach Kolaris, uh, as much as we talk about, you know, um, McLeod Bethel Thompson, MOP, because he had the big number, 350-plus sure. yards, I think that the guy that really impressed me the most was Zach Kolaris last week. And I'm not trying to be a homer. I'm just saying I think that he's, uh, he's going to have an outstanding year. Yeah, he, he's just so dangerous in the way he's able to extend plays and scramble yes. and uh, elude pressure and, and make things happen outside the pocket. That's part of that uh, building a rapport and building trust and gelling with his receiving corp. So let's hear yeah. from uh, Zach Kolaris on that trust and spreading the ball around in this offense. Well, I think the, the ball going different places is, uh, you know, it's more so due to, you know, the way that Buck calls plays and how he gets everybody involved. And, and again, I say it often, you know, my job is to figure out what the defense is doing and, and who, who gets the ball in that play. Right. Uh, I wouldn't say there's a running tally and a guy's head. I mean, everybody's a little bit different, but again, it comes with repetition. It comes with time. And uh, you know, we're, we're all still kind of fresh in this uh, from a quarterback receiver standpoint. And the more and more we practice um, against certain looks and, and throw those one-on-one -on -one routes, I think the easier it becomes in the game. And, and again, it's, yeah, it's it's about just trusting that they're going to do the right thing and them trusting me too because it's it's a two-way street for sure. One of the other things we should say is I found this stat. I always like to look at stats, and I, and, and you know me from TSN. We didn't like to – sometimes I throw the stats out. I don't like them. But having said this, one interception in the last 127 pass attempts. He's doing a great job of protecting the football, and that's another thing I really enjoy about a guy. He's smart. He knows how to win football games. He's a pedigree. He's a great quarterback, but he also doesn't turn that ball over at crucial times. These two teams are both coming into tonight, 1-0, and leading things in their respective divisions, uh, and they're going to play again next week, week three in Toronto, uh, these two teams. So it's always fun and interesting to watch the first of a true back-to-back. -back. Yeah. You don't see it too often in football, but we're seeing the, the first of a home-and-home -home series tonight. Might get a little rivalry going here if these two teams are amongst the league leaders later in the season. Well, it'll be interesting to see as uh, whatever turns out at the end of this game. Uh, but I, I again, back to backs can be a bonus in the fact that you understand the team, but it can also be different because a lot of guys will try and, and I don't understand it though. They don't want to show you their whole package game one. Well, that's stupid because yeah. you want to win the football game. Forget you about win. showing. If you, yeah, if you want, if I show you the whole package, you can't stop it. Too bad that's on you, not me. So. Uh, I like back-to-back. -back. I think it's going to be interesting for us to see and come back and talk about, you know, are we going to talk the same way about, you know, McLeod Bethel Thompson? Are we going to say, boy, he saw a lot of clouds this game. You know, he was on his back a lot. Are we going to talk about Willie? Are we going to talk about all these guys? So I'm excited to see what happens, uh, you know, tonight uh, at IG Field. It's going to kind of feel like playoff weather, Chris. It's been such an absolute scorcher this summer in southern Manitoba. The rain came this past week. Everybody's happy to oh, see yeah. that. But yeah. it's going to be a little bit chillier uh, tonight uh, at IG Field and, and here in the southern parts of the province. Um, it, it could really have uh, that playoff feel. I don't think it's going to affect, you know, the run versus the pass and, and that no. sort of thing. But, no. um, you know, in the end... I really do believe, you know, you you add in the Hamilton Tiger Cats, you add in the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, Calgary's got to show me more. Winnipeg had a Grey Cup rematch week one. This is another serious tilt of teams expected to make a lot of noise this season. 
Yeah, I agree. I think that uh, I think everybody kind of and they're still picking Hamilton. And I'm surprised by that because I, I I was blown away. And I know that Chris Van Ziel, their outstanding offensive yep. tackle, wasn't playing. But to me, that offensive line didn't play very well. And uh, that's not to take anything away from the D-line of the Bombers because they're that good. Yep. But uh, when you got a guy like Mazzoli who couldn't scramble and he couldn't get anything done, aside from that first drive, um, basically they were shut out. I mean, uh, six points done. They missed a two-point conversion. As uh, far as I'm concerned, uh I put the Bombers up uh, up on that top of the class right now, and again, I'm not trying to be biased, even though yep. it sounds like it. Uh, secondly, it'll, it'll but it'll it'll determine what happens tonight. I want to see how they do against a revamped, restructured, retooled Argo team. Absolutely. Well, let's get into Chris Welby's keys of the game here on game day on Bonfire Sports. Critical for the Bombers to accomplish on offense. We saw Brady Oliveira go off in his first CFL start and a CFL top performer for week one. Calaris looked clean and sharp. Kenny Lawler with a pair of touchdowns in the first half. What's the recipe for week two? Listen, if you want the Bombers to beat Toronto, there's a couple things that have to happen. One, if I'm Toronto, I've got to go deep. If I'm the Bombers, I'm doing the same thing. I got to stretch this defense. Keep them honest right now. If I play the short game right off the bat against this team, because I, I think Anak Mwamba and Cameron Judge are two of the best linebackers. Chris Edwards is a good linebacker. I think I need to get those guys to fall back a little bit. So if I throw the ball deep on these guys a couple times, I get them to play. Then they start respecting the run game, or do I run play action? I run a little play action, boom. Now they come up and suck to the line thinking it's a run play, I throw it behind them. You got to play games with these guys, and I think that's how the offense will win. Defensively, it, it, you know what? You can say the same thing almost every week, but when you're going against the Argos and a guy that's got a rifle and gets rid of the ball that quick, you got to pressure. But the biggest thing about pressure is if you're going to add blitzes, and we watched Calgary do this last week, and he beat him with a touchdown because they brought a safety blitz. They lined up in the blitz. You cannot line up in the blitz. You got to disguise your blitz. He picked it up. He threw a guy because there's nobody in the middle, cover zero, bam, touchdown. So you got to disguise your blitz package going against Bethel, uh, McLeod Bethel Thompson. And on special teams, listen, you got to pressure Boris Beatty. This is a guy that got a putt block last week. He's only two for four on field goals. Uh, and the other thing is, I think I need to see Charles Nelson step up. Janarian Grant was number one in the CFL on kickoff returns. He's number three or two in, in putt returns. He's not playing. So I need to see Charles Nelson pick it up. Yeah, it's a six-game injured list for Janarian Grant. Tweaked his ankle, obviously quite badly, in week one. Charles Nelson comes out of the Blue Bombers starting receiving core. In comes rookie Kelvin McKnight, another smaller returner-type player. But you talk about going deep on this Argos defense and catching them off guard. It just might be someone like Kelvin McKnight, so watch for him uh, in the game tonight. Uh, Chris, Always tons of fun having you here uh, on the show. Uh, looking forward to more as the season goes on. We had a yeah. whole ton of people join us for week one. We expect that number to grow as things go. Everybody out there, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe. Hit that like button. Helps Chris and I out a heck of a lot. And uh, keep it locked to bonfiresports.ca throughout the week. We got everything you need uh, to prepare you for CFL week two and beyond here in the 2021 season. Final thoughts, Chris? It's going to be a fun game. Let's tonight. go blue, baby. Let's go blue. I'm going to the game. Let's go. Yeah, I'll Make be there proud. too. Make Absolutely. Proud. Should be a ton of fun. Near capacity crowd expected once again at IG Field. We'll be back here again next week here on YouTube and Bonfire Sports. Thanks for joining us on Game Day Winnipeg.